It's another Explo Corner. And uh, Thursday night, Wednesday night, I believe, I was viewing social media, scrolling through Facebook, which was somewhat depressing to me. Most of the posts I was seeing was RIP, RIP. And I thought maybe I should just come out of Facebook. While scrolling through, I saw a post from Mr. Timothy Stanislaus, which said I did 16 subjects and I passed my 16 with grade ones and I was very shocked. I'm like, how possible could that be? Then scrolling through and I started seeing other students, other parents posting about the achievements of, the of their kids. And I thought, okay, well, yeah, I think this would be something to lift up. Many people out there who are depressed because of COVID, the achievement of our young ones, especially the fact that it is Kariko and Pity Matnik, we know that we are very passionate about. Today, so happy to have with us Timothy Stanislaus and his friends, just at the time when Hillsborough Secondary celebrated the 50th anniversary. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you all doing? I'm doing quite fine. Great. All right. So, please introduce yourselves. Oh, what's that first? Yeah. Right. Um, um, there's Patrice, student of Hillsborough Secondary School. Uh, took on 13 subjects and passed all 13. 13 subjects, passed all 13. Next. Um, my name is Timothy Stanislaus. Um, I attended the Hillsborough Secondary School for all five years. And this year I wrote 16 subjects and I passed all 16 subjects. 16? My name is Elvis Gay, also known as Kobe. I attend the school of Bishop's College. I sat 13 subjects and I got all 13. Ah. Good job, Kobe. Good job, Kobe. Hillsborough Secondary, Bishop's That's College right. with us today. Guys, how, how did that happen? How, I mean, I know in my days, we struggle to get at least nine or ten subjects. How could you all get like 13 and 16? How did that happen? Availability of resources, also. Yeah, and okay. if you, if you um, like, like research and stuff, you realize you have a trend in curriculum, like every year, more and more and more subjects doing. So obviously you have something like, like teachers and principals and different schools adjusting to accommodate students who doing a lot of subjects like more resources and obviously you know like yeah. learning moving to more e-learning so much easier so back in the days you know getting nine ten subjects was like uh, outstanding because at that time you know resources was limited but uh -huh. now resources and uh, internet you know you could learn on the internet so you you spend six hours ten hours in school you learn and you could still do as much work as you did in school or when you're home so that's why I feel like, you know, this amount of subjects could be done now because resources are unlimited. Yeah. Kobe, anything different? Well, um, back in the days, I feel like you had a lot of distractions, especially in families and homes. Like, people struggle to get job opportunities. So, like, people are trying to hustle all the time. So, like, people wasn't really focusing on school as much. So, say, like, my brother or sister go to school. They might be hustling on the side, so they might not focus the hundred percent attention mm -hmm. on their schoolwork. So I think nowadays children have a lot of things you know, laid up, yeah, easier yeah, laid out for them, and it's easier to just focus on you know their academics I and achieve their, their goals. So I think it's much easier now than back then because back then we had people who were doing Yeah, they were saying. Yeah, because they were saying back in the days like. Like children our age, they had no adult duties back in the days, and yeah, like, yeah. now children have it easier now, you know. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah and the parents more value value the education. They see more value in the education for the students, mm -hmm. so they push more towards that mm -hmm. and ensuring that the students get what they require. Okay, so somebody out there probably have struggles in studying. Um, so what would be your advice? Timothy just mentioned something. Well, both Timothy and Yes. Nes, both Timothy and Nes, they mentioned that um, the internet is there. So instead of going to the classroom, after classroom it finishes there, you have the internet, you have YouTube and other um, things where you can study from. Is it that true? So someone who's struggling, um, they probably have difficulties in 
whatever to do in whatever subject, um, getting the answers straight away. You got the advice, what you can do. Yeah, and yeah. Like, yeah. yeah obviously, like, yeah, not every child is different, you know, every child can learn in a classroom, yeah, that's teacher right. speaking, you know. So, now, as I said, like, children have options, you know. I took private classes with them current spring and Trinidad, you know, and yeah, me well. some, yeah, some children prefer online classes, some prefer face to face, some prefer different teaching styles. So, I think in Kariku, especially, you know. You have different resources that could be accessed to accommodate the different needs of different children. And you could find what suited yes. for you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because definitely different things work for different people. Because I find yes. like for years now with the traditional classroom, you know, um it been ineffective. But face to face face to face school of course is good, you know, to interact you learn better and stuff, but yeah, not everybody's the same because every child is unique and yeah. Every child have the weakness and every child has the strength. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Timothy, I remember when I reached out to you, mm -hmm. you gladly accepted. Yes. Then you was not selfish. You mentioned to me there are two of your friends you studied with and they assisted you yes. in a, in your achievement. Yes, ma'am. I want you all to speak about that, about your relationship and how did you all study together? Okay, so just a quick overview of the friendship. I mean, start when we was babies, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> family. We meet. Well, all of us is cousins, like more uh, than yeah. just friends. Yeah. Okay. So, and we met in them um, primary school, pre-primary school, and you know, like obviously you know, whole go through the whole primary school, pre-primary school, we top classes and stuff, you know, competing with one another and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and academically, you know, we've been successful and stuff. And then secondary school, me and Les went same secondary school, could be went to Bishop College and stuff, and you know, and we did what we had to do in the different forms and stuff. And for CXC in particular, we um we usually meet up by Nezzy's house sometimes and by Kobe house sometimes. But like coming to the end, we all meet up by Nezzy's house. You know, sometimes his mom, you know, is a teacher and stuff. And she, she helps us with certain subjects like history. You know, I think the day before history exam, all of us was nervous and like we had a specific topic about the Grenada invasion. Yeah, yeah. Like she was giving us stories about yeah, the yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that really helped. Yeah, that helped a lot, you know, because she, because she was there. She was yeah, yeah. Yeah. she knew the stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all the extra details. And she actually she studied history herself. Also, um one of the main place we used to, you know, come sometimes even for leisure time, sometimes just to chill, you know, relax our mind, but mostly to study and stuff. But obviously, you know, if um, or, um people in Karaku you know um, that my dad, you know, he has different houses and events and stuff. So um we used to come, well, we come here in this, um, in a kind of large like place in St. Louis to study. You know, sometimes we come right here and chill, you know, watch YouTube videos and stuff. Sometimes here we could sit and we book and stuff. And, you know, some after we um, eat some snacks, you know, drink some juice and enjoy the, the view. Very um, relaxing. Yes, yes, yes. I love the view. Yeah. When I view. came and I walked out, I'm like, oh my god, yes. this is home. So big, <laughs> so big shout out to the dad for um, lending us the place to study and stuff. So, um, yeah, generally, you know, we, we, we did everything together, you know, with SBAs and stuff. So I didn't know, of course, Kobe and I explained to me and so they didn't know. We explained to one another. And yeah, we, once we get SBAs out of the way, we started studying and you know, we're just happy to be able to do this good in CXC and you know, speak about the friendship. And one of the things I would say that the relationship between the three of us is the challenge between each other because we, when you're learning, you always need a challenge. You want to meet a certain goal and when you see someone next to you, close to you, reaching that goal before you, you want to reach it with them. So we we'll push one another when we compete against each other. So we'll compare who, who did this, who did this, who's better at whatever certain subject. And we'll help each other with that subject to push each other to that goal we're looking to achieve. Yeah, I really believe the challenge is what really motivates us. Like the challenge among us. Like if this one doing good, the other one do well as well. So that kind of motivates us to do well in general. Nice. Yeah. Um, did y'all use the syllabus as well for studying? Oh, yes. very yes. much. Yes. And it was very helpful, right? Yeah, I think it was it was a 50-50 between syllabus and the teaching. Uh -huh. Because yeah. sometimes the teaching will start to straight off of the syllabus and when you check the syllabus, it will be and then start to question what happened. So you go to the syllabus and try to correct what happened. Like let's say you was the SBAs. You correct your work from you could correct your work for yourself from the syllabus and then you could give the teacher to check it for. Right. So yeah. And you don't always have to depend on them. Yeah. And what I noticed is that 
some things like like i else you know what i didn't do was just go and open the textbook and read it i, would, I just mm -hmm. i know i couldn't do that i couldn't just sit down and read the textbook because the syllabus if you go online different c set subjects have specific syllabuses and on the syllabus um it clearly outlines what you need to know you know like definitions of certain words and stuff so i personally use this syllabus to study and when I the questions I want to tell me I need to know that's when I go and look in the textbook. You know, I just didn't pick up the textbook and read it and stuff. So yes, I did study from the syllabus and I um use the syllabus to um guide me when I was doing my SBAs because obviously in the syllabus there's the SBA marking scheme. So yeah. yeah well, apart from studying and uh, going in a book, um like teaching others, trying to educate others based on what I've learned, my knowledge, yes. really boosts me academically. Make me remember you know, what I actually read. You know, I think that's really effective. Sometimes you learn something and trying to help others around you will benefit you. You see, that, that's the thing about Kobe. Yeah? Like, well, as soon as he learns something, he uh -huh. like to break it down and explain it for us. Yeah, explain and, it. And us. that helps. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. that helps. Yeah, sometimes, even after church, we didn't yard and he's telling us about biology and all. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Y'all keep mentioning SPs, SPs. Tell us the importance of doing your SBA? Well, uh, since it, it's actually a big chunk of your exams, your exam grades, so it would actually f it would work as a, a life support, I should say. So if you mess up certain parts of the actual examination, the SBA could be, could be there to spring you back up to that extra grade you need, maybe to get a grade one, if you was if you're getting a grade two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I find um, students take SBAs as a joke. Mm -hmm. They don't really utilize SBAs and like, you know, plagiarism and, you know, I think it's students should really take SBAs as a joke because going into shouldn't. it, we um, shouldn't take it as a joke. Yes, shouldn't. Uh, so what I'm saying is that I find students um, Just should take it. I find Just students should take SBAs serious because going into an exam for a specific subject with a good SBA grade, you know, could help you grade a lot. And you have some subjects, the SBAs worth up to 50% of your mark. So you just want to, and then your SBA grade is completely in your hand. So you, you want to take that opportunity and cover and get that grade, get the, maximize the grade you get on your SBA. So, you know, you have a solid foundation going into the examinations. And that's what we all did, you know, we worked yes. together, we do the SBA exams. And we had help from external sources. It wasn't just we alone, because in the exams, is you alone doing the exam. Yeah. Yeah. Outside, we have people come and help us. That exactly. is... Yeah, see, that's where I we have control over that grade. Yeah, yeah, that's where I want to commend the teachers and the principals because they sat, you know, they were patient, you know, because not every teacher could sit down with a child, you know, and explain to them and give, give them advice. That's why you want to have a good relationship with your teachers and stuff, you know, you know, be respectful and stuff, you know, so, you know, they look out for you and they give you yeah. some advice so you could better the SBA mark and so on. Yeah. Yeah, well, concerning SBA, I will encourage and urge you guys to try to get. 100 percent you know like the full max you could obtain in sba don't feel like you get 39 out of 40 and be satisfied always try to aim for the highest mark you could get and that would just give you a boost in the end yeah, so because it could always mistake. be changed yes yeah, when i make a mistake in a long answer a multiple choice sometimes that one mark could you know it it to if you yeah. get a one or a two or a three yeah, you could distinguish that yeah, and as you said, you know, like the good relationship with the teacher, you know, as you said, the 30, 9 out of 40. Mm -hmm. A good relationship with the teacher, you know, respectful and stuff, you know, that teacher could advise you, you know, um, you know, how we, what you could do to get that one mark to get the 40 out of 40, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. And I guess going into the exam room, your mind would be at ease knowing, okay, I score so and so amount in my essay. Well, if I've been completely <laughs> honest, my mind was not that he's going into the exam because he was a lot of pressure because thinking about doing an exam mm -hmm. is completely different than actually doing the exam because the pressure the anxiety seeing yes. other children because i realized that seeing my um classmates nervous it makes me nervous you know that's true so, yes yeah, so you know but um, overcome the pressure you know do what you do what you have to do because at the end of the day you study and you know what you know mm -hmm. and you put it on the exam and there was something similar with me where the first exam i had to do uh i i was confident that i was not nervous. I get the paper in front of me, turn that page, yeah. my brain shut down. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I get completely lost <laughs> after turn yes, that page. Happened. The first exam, but what I, what I enjoyed about closing that exam paper was all all nervousness was gone for every other exam. Uh -huh. But that just one thing I regret was just not being able to calm myself before that exam because the question 
they had questions that I didn't answer on that exam, but I knew I knew what the answers were to those questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just because of the no, the fear. So what grade you got in that exam? Oh, I uh, got a grade three. Yeah. Grade three. That, oh, yeah, yeah. so you could have. Got yeah, yeah. That grade and you, no, and the thing is, after that exam, I actually told them that I told them that I'll be getting a grade three in that exam. Oh really? Yeah, because I sat there and I could see what I did wrong. I could uh, see everything, point everything out. Uh, yeah. Just because yeah. of nervousness. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I see the first exam. Uh -huh. That feeling, I don't know, I can't explain. I was really nervous. And I was so confident, so confident that I was ready. I it's must commend you all because the thing about it, because of COVID, we know that students they were at home. Yeah. And okay, so tell me what did you all do while you were at home? I know many students they, they would take that opportunity to probably go out on the beach or do something. Did you all study during that time? What was happening for you all? Well, for me, you know, once again, being completely honest and transparent, um, we, we didn't go. We didn't go out much. We no, didn't always, we didn't. always. In the book. You see, I would say that you know, um, we did just work. You know, not much playing. You know? SP, yeah, yeah SP. We worked on because that's what we were. Preparing. Because all of us, you know, we play sports and stuff, and you know, you know, we really dedicated our time. You know, because but in the the time was a sacrifice that we had to make if we wanted to come to success. Successful. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. So, you know, going out wasn't really our option, you know. Sometimes we would have a little fat or something in character, you know. Mm -hmm. Like a thing on the beach, you know. But, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we will measure one another and we say, way by. Way because you have everybody going out and have the fun and thing, you know. And when you see, we say, you know, at the end of the day, we were happy that we didn't go. Mm -hmm. And then when we finish the exams, we can enjoy ourselves. Yeah, we have all the time. After all the time. Exactly. Enjoy. Have all yes. the time afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So now you, you get your 13 and your 16 subjects. If you want, you could go on the beach now. You could go the same places that they all went to in it. Well, the only funny thing is we have a sign up for keep by the end of the month. So right. back in school. Right. Back in the prison. Okay, so what's the next step? For me, the next step is to attend Tamsisi on the mainland mm -hmm. to study law. Because I want to pursue a, um, a career in corporate law, ah. and then I would try to I would apply to colleges and universities in my father's motherland, United Kingdom, okay. to you know hope you know get into Oxford or Cambridge, and I could further get my law degree, you know, and I'll do the bar exam and stuff, and you know, become a corporate lawyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think you have a passion, and I can see it in you. You can debate very well. Practice. Parliament in many developing countries is ineffective. Instability accounts for low voter turnout, much propaganda, too many short-term policies evident in India and some African nations. Um, well, you know, I love to, you know, break down certain topics. I love to defend people, you know. I love to win arguments and stuff. You know? ah. Yes, yeah, so I really yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. something that's yeah. a good voucher. Never wrong yet. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you know, I say, you know, why not do what I'm good at and make money? Of course. Oh, yes, you know. They have and a passion also, for that. They have a passion for it as well. You know, hope I could be okay, sure. Yeah, I've been looking at you, you from since form one. Into engineering because, yeah. so what I did was, when I wanted to pick my subjects, um, I was unsure because I, at that time I didn't know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So my mother gave me this idea that if you don't know what you want to do, then do everything. Mm -hmm. So when you go, when you finally decide what you want to that do, choice. you already have options, all your options there ready, mm -hmm. which was one of the greatest advice I could have ever gotten. Mm -hmm. Because now that I decided I want to do engineering and I actually did physics and chemistry, which I actually wasn't going to do chemistry, now I could get, get that subject I want to do. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, well, the next move from here is pursuing a career sports related. Everybody who knows me, <laughs> yeah. I have a great passion for athletics, sports, sports in general. Yeah. And nice. I really want to be a physiotherapist. Well, actually, originally I wanted to be a professional athlete. But I slightly think that window is closing for me, but I still not giving up as yet. Yeah. But other than that, academic wise, I want to be a physiotherapist. Great. Best wishes in your endeavors and I'll be looking at you all right mm -hmm. very closely. So do you want to name some of the subjects that you all passed? Uh, um, um, yeah. The thought that I passed were math, English, uh, physics,
chemistry, biology, IT, geography, history, um, agriculture, and economics. Great. Yeah. Oh, I'm building furniture technology. And and technical drawing. Technical drawing. Okay. Yeah. The subject I did was um, EDPM, history, technical drawing, agriculture, social studies, English, A, mathematics, geography, industrial technology, electrical. Biology, Economics, Physical Education, Human and Social Biology, Principle of Business, Physics, Information Technology, and Caribbean History. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got great ones. Yes. <laughs> what else? Yeah, I did, um, I think, Maths and English, of course, mm -hmm. Agriculture, IT, Building Technology, Technical Drawing, Physics, Biology, Geography, um, what else did I miss? History and if I said that already, oh, yeah, etc. Okay, so what advice would you give someone? Mm -hmm. Someone out there looking at you now, they're at school or wherever, and they want to know how, how can I better myself? What advice do you have for them starting from next? Find somebody, find somebody like minded as you with similar goals to achieve. Somebody who could push you to further achieve what you're looking to, to gain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you hear that? They say definitely with them. Some advice I have for children who are sitting CSEP this year, no, I mean next year, who will be sitting CSEP in time to come. The first piece of advice is, of course, to I always pressing on this point is to utilize the SBA mark. The SBA mark contributes a lot to your grades. Also, um, I would like to say that, of course, a good relationship with your teachers, you know, so they could guide you, keep you on the right path, someone to talk to and stuff. Another point, and I personally experienced it, you know, there was times where I put school over my mental health. And I just want to urge and plead to children that your mental health is way more important than school. And you know, the school ha always have a counselor, you know, you could talk to. And once again, good relationship with a teacher, you know, you could always talk to them, you know, sometimes you can go to your parents. But never put school over your mental health. And that was a mistake I made, and it was a lot of stress and pressure. So never put school over your mental health. You know, and you know, speak to somebody if you have to speak to somebody. Timothy, I know you're still debate. Did that prepare you for oh, what's happening? I mean, your big achievements now, or did that prepare you? Well, for Greenleg debate, you know, I was put into the debating, the debating team as soon as, as soon as, as soon as I entered formal, you know, it was a surprise and stuff, you know, I never even expected to be a starter, you know, I just expected to be an adventure somewhere. But obviously I debated in primary school, you know, I won, we won, I won the best debate and stuff. A teacher at HSS, Miss Knight, shout out to Miss Knight, she was a judge at the time in Harveyville School, mm. and she saw me debating at Harveyville School, and she was, she went to the other teachers in HSS and she said, when this boy come in HSS, you know, we will trial him and make sure you see, try make him trial for the team. They go so grab you. We we'll grab him. <laughs> so yeah, so when I entered HSS, of course I did my trial, you know. Um I got in and they they delivered the news to me. Little me for one chilling, eating I think I was eating our bread with tea from the talk shop. And you know, Miss McFarlane, my English teacher, she she came and told me, um, Timothy would like to inform you that you would be our second speaker. As I was very surprised because I didn't expect to be a speaker, of course, I mm -hmm. expected to be on the bench. So, you know, I was happy and debate, the overall process was extremely difficult, like very difficult. And I really feel that the pressure from CSEC this year mm -hmm. um, could have been worse. But the pressure I experienced in four months to debate, it really hardened me for mm -hmm. CSEC. But yeah, debate overall was... Um, it was a good experience we won I was the 2016 Grand Lake Debates champion hailing from the sister island of Karakou, Hillsborough Secondary School. I am the South Paul School Best Debater and I was very happy. I was, I was surprised for that award as well. But debate, the topics they tend to give are very, very intricate. So you have to break it down, you know into parts, you know, specializing. And you have to learn to, you know, analyze certain stuff and carry your points and stuff. So I learned a lot from debate. 
especially like about brain drain and stuff and that was in knowledge i uh, was able to utilize in the social studies exam and the pub exam so some stuff that um i remembered from form one in the debate and form two and form three i was able to utilize it because um not i can learn everything i can learn yes. everything there so some of the knowledge from debate was you know i was able to um yeah apply it to the exams i was very happy you know and obviously you know as i grew older i was able to you know particularly you know better and stuff you know form the questions a little better form the answers a little better so yes overall debate was a good experience and yeah great kobe uh, well, I think this advice doesn't go to only students uh, sitting CXC in the coming years or this year, but I think this is a general advice. I believe consistency is one of the most important things to achieving goals and to succeeding. Because starting is hard, finishing is even harder. But consistency is the hardest part of the journey. Maintaining your composure, maintaining that A grade, you know, being up to mark, I believe that is the hardest thing to accomplish. Yes, because it's, it's one thing to get at the top, eh? but maintaining and staying at the top is the harder part. Yes. Yeah, sure. You mentioned bread routine. Tell me what your dad was like um, <laughs> wow. during the exam period. I think um, the food man should speak about this time. Oh, so yes. man for food. And yes. <laughs> well, I can be the food man because my diet during those times, or well, since I wanted to lose weight, but I don't recommend doing this. I used to eat once every 24 hours, which yeah. it helped decrease weight, yes, but it wasn't too good for my health. That's true. Yeah. Mm. Well, my diet over the, the whole journey, as he said. Well, as, as plenty of people know me, you know, as a very slim boy, you know. So, um, my diet, as I said, you know, at times I put school over my mental health, so I couldn't really get the proper nutrients that my body needed. So, I was, at times I was tired, you know, I was very fatigued, I was, you know, I wanted to sleep and so. But then again, my mom, she always preparing nice food for me. So. Uh, and whenever I go up at Kobe's and there's house to study and stuff, okay. always, you know, the creme de la creme, you know, of the food, you know, the best, you know, <laughs> chickens and big <laughs> sandwiches. Okay. Well, I hope well, you didn't overdo yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes um, when they when they would come by me, they would actually uh, get, ask them to bring in some groceries and we would cook. The whole, okay. All of us would cook together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it, it was a nice feeling knowing that all three of us, you know, we got our objectives for certain subjects done and we were able to go down downstairs and have a big fat plate of food waiting <laughs> for us. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Besides the diet, Kobe, I know. You're very good at sports. You represented your school at Intercourse. Tell us about that. Well, Intercourse, I can remember my first time winning a race in Intercourse. Yeah, I remember. And the first time I win a race, I actually broke a record. And that meant. Yes, man. <laughs> yeah, and that no meant a lot to me. I think. Of course. Me it meant a lot to us in Thai Accomplished Magic yeah, yeah. as well. I think me uh, breaking a record um, motivated me a lot. Make me. Like it allowed me to keep on going, you know, keep on going and it allowed me to like focus a lot on sports but not forgetting my academics too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So from Form 1, I've been doing good in the call, I think, uh, oh, I, actually, yeah, I got the divisional champs. I got gold in 400 meters. Mitchell and Gay, Mitchell and Gay, here is the run. Here comes uh, Gay, here comes Gay as he goes past him. It is going to be Gay. Gay wins it ahead of Mitchell and in lane number two it was Jalen Daniel of St. Davis Catholic Secondary who got the third place. <laughs> high jump, a new record, a new record for high jump and 400 meter record. I got silver in javelin, I was really disappointed. I got silver in long jump. And the following year I got gold in 800, I broke the 800 meter record by a mile, by a whole five seconds. And that year, I was actually offered an opportunity to represent Grenada in the Caribbean uh, CUT Games. COVID and something uh, went wrong with the flight and mm -hmm. the uh, phones for the team. So the entire Grenada team wasn't 
Eva to go to the CUG mm. games. It must be disappointing. You know, the be. big opportunity I lost. I still, mm-hmm. you know, think about it all the time. And apart from that, uh, my last year on the 17th, um, I've been working so hard. I've been putting in times. And uh, COVID-19 just messed up the whole opportunity for me to maybe carry for the team. Yeah, I remember that time. Maybe it was very sad. Yeah, very emotional. Yeah, I feel that too. Don't worry. Don't give up hope. So one day, yeah. yeah. It only takes one day. Yeah, I ain't giving up. I'm still pushing. Still so, forward. Great. Yeah. Um. So tell me, when you all got the news that you all passed all your subjects, how did you all feel? I knew when the result, my results were coming out. So, I'm the type of person who like to stay uh what should you say in the shadows i prefer to not not have known my grades actually but my mom and my sister well well uh, when the time had come to register the time at the portal had opened i had i tried my best to avoid going going there to see those grades that didn't Just want to see yeah, yeah i know the feeling um but ooh, they they did not they, okay. they did not give me a chance um <laughs> They came, they came into my room and they, they sat, they, 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 they pressured me as oh, much, they, they did as they much as they could. They you. Yeah, they, they were invested in finding out what those grades were. <laughs> well, yes, I, I did end up passing all oh, when I officially opened it. Even my dad was, well, he didn't show as much enthusiasm, but he was, he wanted to know as well. Because yeah. all men, all 14 passes are a lot of subjects. Oh, I received the news because every year, usually, um, like, I think the top three students, you know, um, who perform in the CSET for Grenada, they get the results the day before. Mm-hmm. So I was waiting the day before, you know, because I was hoping that I would top, you know, come in the top three, you know. So I was waiting, 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 and it was a long night. And, you know, I just made up my mind that maybe I just had to go in the portal and get my results, you know. You know, look like I'm getting a call. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was starting to get nervous. I was like, oh, but thinking, what if I get me all ones? You know, what if I'm top? You know, so, what if I, you know, come in the top three? So, I was nervous, you know. And I think it was nine o'clock, around seven, seven, seven. 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 The Ministry of um, Education of Guinea released a document saying, we so say, I was reading through the document, and in the top performance list, you had two students that got six in grade ones. And I was like, I was wondering if you know if I's one, you know, I know who do sixteen in greens and things. What if three students in greens do sixteen, you know, and mm-hmm. I's two of them get it? So I was like, I was racing, at, and then Kobe called me. I think Ness couldn't call because he didn't have his phone at the time, you know. So Kobe called me and he was like, "Bro, I just see sixteen ones, two students get sixteen ones. You definitely is one." Yeah. But you know. As they say, like I, I didn't want to hear that because like I don't know, you know, I don't know, I don't know. But I didn't want to say that too. And he was telling me I was one, I was one, I one. So at that time I was starting, I had like a panic, I started to panic, you know, I was because personally I thought, you know, I was gonna get all 16 grade ones because I did the exam and I know how I did, you know. So I was nervous when I heard um hear that two students get 16 grade ones. So I called the principal, Mr. Lendo. You know, just to talk to him, tell him I see the press release and I know about some stuff, you know. I say, so, you know, um, I see two, two students get 16 grade ones. I'm a hoping one is me or something, you know. And you know, one was me and we have one was in grade now. So I was like, hoping one was me and stuff. And I called him and he tell me, calm down, calm down. Go and eat because I told him I couldn't eat, I couldn't, you know. He said, go and eat and relax and so so I did that, but obviously I couldn't relax. But you know, I did I did go and eat. I was eating pasta and stuff, you know, for carbohydrates. And um, yes, yeah, so I was eating. And then my phone started to vibrate in my bed. So my ring too. And like my heart just dropped. I, I, like I never what? That was worse than the bit. The nervousness was worse than the bit, you know? My, my heart dropped. So, you know, I pick up the phone. I say, I say it's probably Kobe again calling, you know. So, you picked up the phone. Did you recognize the number calling? Well, the call was from WhatsApp and I saw Mr. Brian Lendo. Okay. And that's when I realized, I say, oh my God, you know, I, I, 
to her, I was nervous. Uh -huh. And the funny thing is, when I answered the phone, he didn't want to speak to me. He wanted to speak my, to my mother. So okay, I was like, so yeah, it's okay with your mother. I was, like, phone. I was like, okay. And he told my mother to leave the phone and speak her. So I was like, all right. And then he was, you know, Mr. Lenny, you take over Mr. Lenny, you know, he liked to make me nervous and stuff. So he's making long talk, you know. Yes. yes. So he's talking, talking, you know, he tell me, mom. Yes, but the boy said he couldn't eat and thing. Make sure he eat his food and thing. Yeah, so I was, I was like, I was like, so so I eat man, you know. So tell Get me, to the yeah, point. Like, yeah, so I was like, because I shaking, I ready, you know. And my mom had the phone. She shaking too. And he was like, well, as you know, your son did sixteen subjects. Well, we just got notified that he passed all sixteen subjects, and it was also brought to our attention that he passed sixteen subjects with all grade ones. I just start to scream, I start to shout, I call, I me, know that feeling. I call me teachers, I tell them thanks, you know, I tell nice. them thanks, I want to tell my grandmother, I just call my grandmother in Grenada. He was just like, you know, I'm not, I'm not fit, but I run, I jump, I, I do, I, you know, I call my friends and stuff, you know, obviously my friends message me, Nez message me. I also call Nez, um, Nez's sister, Tisha, because you know she was there giving me advice and stuff. Because you know, as she previously she talked in 2019. So, yes, I called her and I told her the news and stuff. You know, my Kobe also found out the news, you know. And it was genuinely a good moment because we have a group chat with all our with friends, you know, from school from Harveyville around that area. And yeah, everybody was there. I told them it was congratulating me and stuff. And usually, when I win stuff with them, um, come for so tops, like, I don't really post nothing, you know, I don't really think. But I see, this, the, you know, this achievement, you know, maybe, you know, maybe I'll do a little post on Facebook or something. Because I didn't really plan to post, but like, the, it's like, the excitement and the adrenaline, you know, it's like, I couldn't control, but I just had to, you know. That is true. Yes. Because I remember when I saw the post, I'm like, no, Timothy don't usually post. <laughs> so... Yeah. I had to go and look at your name to make sure it's yeah, you yeah. and I waited until other people started saying congratulations yeah. and then you respond I'm like well yeah yeah, it's yeah true. well because I do yeah, yeah, yeah that's but, true. But, um, friends know me you know I don't post on Instagram I don't post you know they don't I just, post much I just using social media you know to get any updates yeah. about school and work and stuff yes. obviously to yeah, text my friends and stuff yeah. but yeah I'm not really that much about social media guy you know yeah, I just no, have my phone and stuff yeah. yeah, I'm so what when I received the results, you know, I informed everybody and the first thing I did, I, did, I wasn't see the first thing I did was thank the teachers and my friends and mm -hmm. everybody. And the next morning I woke up, it was more kind Yes, I sleep. You know, well I, that was the first time I could actually sleep, you know, okay. because like before I was nervous and stuff. Yeah, but I slept, I slept a little late. This is unusual, but yeah, I slept and like next morning I woke up, I got a few calls and stuff saying congratulations and stuff. And the overall, I think the overall experience was good. The receiving the news, I think that was the most suspenseful, suspenseful mm. way to receive news. Uh -huh. Yeah, because Miss Anna, she had you going, man. She had me going. Well, <laughs> and thing is, he call the phone and he have a nice, funny yes. accent and so I know him. I say he up to something. You know, I thought so. Yeah, I say he up to something and he yeah. want to speak to mommy. I say chief. Why you tell me? Just tell me. I said, Mr. Lenny, no, please, you know, I'll say, stop. Like, you know, I'm getting nervous, getting more nervous. Mm. And when I'm finally getting you, you know, my mind finally rests. And I was grateful to get all 16 ones with Good most job. April files. Great job. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you're playing second in the state. Second in the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was a new record for Hillsborough Secondary School. Oh, really? Yes. Um, equally recording. She is a still with 16 subjects. And uh, broke the previous record of 15 subjects, which was, old, which was held by um, Roshan Lender uh -huh. of 15, so about 16. And yeah, and this was actually a perfect time to you know, break the record we write history as HSS was just celebrating their 50th yeah, anniversary. Man. Yes, you know, so that time yeah. the timing was perfect, perfect, you know, to rewrite history, you know. Yeah, and I just, yes, and I just want to put it out there that you know. HSS was my home for the last five years and I really love everybody who was there, the staff, you know. Of course there are ups and downs, nothing could be perfect and so okay. but I just wanna thank everybody and I really love the institution. I feel so good. I feel I feel even better to make the school and the staff proud than make myself proud, you know. I just happy, you know, and to receive the call from the teacher the next morning and stuff. Yeah, I was very happy and the whole moment was surreal. Okay, when I got when I was the time to log into a portal. I was really nervous. 
I was going in and out of the toilet 24 7. <laughs> yeah, because. And then my sister called me and told me, come over, let's open it together. So I said, alright, great. So I had bring one computer to her room and we sat down and she put in my information and then she told me, don't look. I said, what do you mean, don't look? <laughs> I said, I will see you regardless. <laughs> so she clicked it and I'm gonna open up. I started scroll, I see ones, ones. Then I started scroll, I see some twos. Then don't wanna shake my head. And I see ones, ones. So I won't say I was satisfied, but I'm grateful. You know, I didn't achieve the exact goal I wanted to achieve, but I still did wonderful. Yeah, so I was really happy at the end. You know, my mother was coming with us, she was like, don't worry, it's still a big achievement. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. yes. While we're celebrating your success, we know that there are some students who did not perform as well as you did. What encouragement do you have for them? Obviously, like, when if you re receive the results you didn't want to, you know, sometimes you don't want to hear what people are to say, like stuff, you know. Because I know the feeling, like sometimes I walk to get like a hundred percent or some or something, like um, I'm getting hundred percent. Like I really want to hear about oh grades are defining and stuff because I know what I work for and you know the grades mean a lot to me. So obviously, you know, I know students who uh, might take it a little tough and stuff, and they might not really want to hear nothing. They just want to settle and settle the and stuff. But um, at the end of the day. CXC, we still have keep in time CC, and we could always prove itself in time CC, and yeah, you know. So hopefully they come back, you know, they learn, you know, when mistakes they make, and they change that because they have experience, now. and they could apply that experience, you know, and fix the mistakes. So hopefully they come back and keep or any future activities or objective they wish to achieve. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think that failure is normal and at a point in time everybody may experience some type of failure and it's okay to fail, all you have to do is get up and keep trying Amen. and no matter what happens, if you have the ability to try again, keep trying again, try. you can fail 10 times, get up that 10 times and try again. Um, to the people who that I actually helped, that I was helping work, um, yes. working with. I would like to say, don't let numbers define who you are. Um, you should work past those, past those trials. Uh, further, further look to achieve because there is more steps to take in life. And this is not just an end for you. This is more of the, this is the start of a new beginning. So, this is now the time to sit down and decide upon what is it you want to do. Since now you know your weaknesses and your strengths, so you could separate them and decide on your life goals. Wow. And I would like to sim also sympathize, as I said, with as I said, with the people that I helped. I feel the pain. I feel the pain because we were all there together. Along with these guys, there were actually other students who would come over to my home, and we would also work together. Uh, they were maybe they were weaker in certain subjects and are stronger, and th those are subjects I would be there to guide them with. So yes, uh, keep your uh, like I say, just keep your heads up and look for a brighter future. Also, I think um, different people have different gifts. Maybe academics is not your gift, mm -hmm. and you prefer to pursue otherwise, then you should. That's true. That's true. So I just learned that you are love. All old boys of uh, Harveyville Government School, right? Yes, right, <laughs> So it all started somewhere. It started at Harveyville Government School. Yeah, we Harveyville. <laughs> sat down on the school bench, you know, eating lunch together, play sports together. Popping a little chubby, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. We almost did everything together. Nice. Thank you, guys. Great interview. Continue right. working hard. Continue working smart. Okay, thank Finally, you. Finally, is you. there anybody? Y'all want to say thanks to yeah. uh, like to shout out to parents um, along with the teachers who were there to guide the, guide me there. Um, mostly I would like to shout out to Cowen Springer and the program which was a big help to me for online for online studying when the teachers were not there during COVID. Um, for me it's quite a few, you know, because I honestly Call them like off. I want to be genuine and transparent and I want to 
outline mm -hmm. people who really had an important role in my success. So I want to, of course, thank Kobe, you know, for everything, like the explanations, you know, um, so, you know, being able to go over by him and study and stuff. And I also want to thank Nels, you know, for his mom's amazing food and stuff. And him being able to explain stuff, especially technical drawing, where that's his strong area and stuff. And I also want to thank his mom, you know, for helping me in economics and history and for, you know, for the food and the accommodation. And I also want to thank Kobe's mom for the same thing, as well as his sister, who was who will always pitch in on nice advice and stuff. And of course, my parents, my father and my mom, obviously my dad, you know, he doesn't really show that he's happy, but, you know, just by watching him, you could That's tell, men. You, could, you, <laughs> you could tell he's happy, yeah? he come, he give me a bong, you know, you roll in, he's jolly, but mommy, I just want to thank mommy for everything, you know, obviously seasick, you know, the mother just feel the nervousness just as much as you, you know, and yeah, I just want to thank her for everything, you know, the food, you know, the emotional support and stuff. And a big, 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 genuine thanks to Mr. Brian Lindor, my principal. He was like my father when I entered Hillsborough Secondary School, you know. Always there for me with math, you know, always there. And not only did he assess me academically, you know, he, he was always there to um, better my character, you know. So, you know, always teaching me, you know, humbleness, you know, discipline and stuff. And he was always there. And I just want to put out um, the thanks for them and be on behalf of the class the 2021 HSS class. I just want to say, Mr. Lendo, um, I'm very thankful for everything on behalf of the class. Also, I want to thank my teachers, especially my teachers, you know, always give me advice, you know, how I could better my SBA grade and stuff, you know, my English teacher, this is my, my maths teacher, everybody will teach me, you know, sometimes me and Mr. Mose will stay back and, you know, do our ITSB, help me with my ITSB. Well, not help, you know, but like give me advice with the ITSB and stuff. And yeah, and also my other friends, you know, our, our friends in the group chat, you know, Shimon, Shimon, Alec, Daniel, Jaden, Khalil, all of them, you know, Akim, you know, socially, they help me keep my social life, you know, balance my social life, not only with academics, you know, because I was able, you know, as I said before, I was able to go to school and get my work done and have a little laugh, you know, not serious all day and stuff, you know. Obviously, I have other friends, you know, like Jodine. She helped a lot. She's very smart. She um, is from HSS as well, and she did 15 subjects. Okay. Yes. And also, I want to thank, you know, Shakira there for the last, you know, the um, motivation. And we always, you know, the, like, in school, we always have a own ecosystem of friends, as I said. And, you know, we get well work done. And, you know, we laugh, we make jokes, you know. And, yeah, I just want to thank. And anybody I didn't mention, you know, but yes. you know you played that. You played a, a role in my success. I want to thank you very, very much. Oh, also Miss B, who would also, you know, give me, prepare a nice cup of coffee for me sometimes in the mornings, you know, so I could get through the day because, you know, as I said, I was I used to be very tired. So, yes, I just want to thank everybody for everything because at the end of the day, these 16 subjects and 16 months was not a one-man job. You know, in a conversation-wise, I just want to give God a big, big up for everything, you know, because there are times I was doubting myself. And, you know, I was able to overcome that doubt with the help of God. You know, and sometimes God sends certain people in my life to, you know, motivate me and stuff. So when I prayed a lot, you know, after each subject, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. Yeah. Some subjects, you know, I say, well, probably this will be hard. And it was not hard. So I just want to thank God for everything. Okay. Yeah, firstly, I want to thank God because I believe he's in control of everything. And secondly, I want to thank my parents. Especially my mother, she's always there for me. Sometimes when I don't even want she to be around. Mm. She think I don't appreciate the things she do for me, but I know that she knows I'm grateful. She really do a lot for me. You know, sometimes I'm studying and she will bring meals to my room, you know, ensure that I eat and eat, I'm in good health, etc. Also thank my sisters, brothers, other family members who support me on that journey. Also the staff the principal of Bishop's College, I will definitely thank them and everyone who support me and play a role in my success. Great. Thank you for conducting oh, this. Oh, um, and uh, one last thank you I'd like to send to our bus driver. We all had the same bus driver for uh -huh. for those late nights when after 8 p.m. he would, he would be there. He would, sometimes he, he would even be the last bus there 
and he'll be able to get us home whether he would not believe us sometimes when he tells us that we're doing well. Yeah, remember, but, you okay, used yeah. to say, by the way, I'll come out, you know? Yeah, you yeah. call yeah. the bus driver name yet, eh? Um, yeah, Puti. Mr. Puti, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you got option, 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 option. 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 You know, it's because he never used to believe us, but, yeah. we, you know, because we did a lot of subjects we was in school late nights, you know, yeah. was, I was uh, yeah. Big up this stuff. Going home 8 p.m. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we all come out this all while, you know. We all come out in the past year and chill, you know. We come out in school, but it never so believe us, yeah, but yeah. we got put here, man. Yeah. All right. So I want to thank you all for appearing on Explo Caricon Fish and Ethnic Explo Corner. I want to extend sincerest congratulations to you all again. Um, thank you for the conduct of this interview. I know that there are people out there. This is just what they want. They want mm -hmm. an uplifting story. It is very depressing now. And yeah. this is just what they need. Continue working. I, I see the team spirit between y'all. And a chain is as strong as its weakest link. Don't give up on each other. Y'all started from day one. And mm -hmm. keep that between y'all. Mm -hmm. The genuinity. Just continue being there for each other. And continue looking up to the most high for yes. everything. Yes, Congratulations again and thank you. Thank you. Thank you.